This is Common Core State Standard Support Video for Mathematics. The standard is 4NF3 and there's actually four components A, B, C, and D. The first part of the standard states understand a fraction A over B with A greater than 1 as a sum of fractions 1 over B. Part A, understand addition and subtraction of fractions as joining and separating parts referring to the same whole. Part B, decompose a fraction into a sum of fractions with the same denominator in more than one way, recording each decomposition by an equation. Justify decompositions by using a visual fraction model. So for example, 4 over 7 will be 1 7 plus 1 7 plus 1 7 plus 1 7 and so forth. Part C, add and subtract mixed numbers with like denominators by replacing each mixed number with an equivalent fraction and or by using properties of operations and the relationship between addition and subtraction. And finally, part D, solve word problems involving addition and subtraction of fractions referring to the same whole and having like denominators by using visual fraction models and equations to represent the problem. Now, first off, in adding and subtracting fractions, students must understand a huge assumption in the symbolism and actually it's stated in, in uh, part A and that's the idea of the same whole. So for example if we had 1 6 plus 1 6 there's no way it can be this kind of scenario we're talking about two totally different uh, objects and parts. And even when they're the same objects like here, they're both circles and they're interiors, uh, the slices are not the same size, so I cannot add this 6 with this 6. So we focus on part 3a, understand addition and subtraction of, and of fractions as joining and separating parts referring to the same whole. Okay, so again, that's very important. So here, we can combine this 6 and this 6. And likewise over here, I can combine this 6 with that 6 because again, they are parts of the same whole. And of course, this applies to subtraction also. So let's say we have 3 6 and we're going to subtract 1 6. Well, we can subtract this because again, they're equal sized parts of the same whole, which leaves us in this case with 2 6. Now the standard does talk about the same whole, but it's important to realize that we can also be talking about congruent holes. As long as I know that this rectangular figure and this rectangular figure are congruent, then I can combine these equal sized parts, this 1 6 with this 1 6. Same situation here, as long as I know that these two hexagons are congruent to each other, and of course that the parts are divided equally the same way, then I can combine this 1 6 with this 1 6. So now let's look at uh, part B. Decompose a fraction into a sum of fractions with the same denominator in more than one way. And it also states to uh, record each decomposition by an equation and justify the decomposition by using a visual fraction model. So let's do that here. So let's start off with 3 fourths and then we can break that down to 2 fourths and 1 fourth. And then we can take the 2 fourths and further break that down so that we would have 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. Now this is a good point to interject that initial statement for this standard that states that we need to understand a fraction A over B with A greater than 1 as a sum of fractions 1 over B. So here A would be 3 and so basically this is what it says that I've got this fraction A over B and it's just the sum of all these 1 over b's. In this case, there's 3 of them. So just like over here. So 3 fourths is simply the sum of 3 separate 1 fourths. And this would apply to any fraction regardless of what the numerator and denominators are. Now let's take the same idea of decomposing a fraction and applying to a mixed number. And it basically works the same way. So here I've got uh, 3, which breaks up to 1 plus 1 plus 1, of course. And then we have our fraction 2 over 6. Now, if we take this literally and we're going to do this as a sum of fractions, then we can convert all of the 1s into, in this case, 6 over 6, so that uh, you know, we have this diagram and our accompanying equation 
But then we can further take the one six, the two six and break it up to one six plus one six. And then simply by counting, the students can tell, okay, we got six, that's 18, 19, 20. So we have a total of 20 over six, 21 six. So now with that idea of mixed numbers in mind, we can go on to the next uh, part of this, which is standard 3C, which involves adding and subtracting mixed numbers with like denominators. And so let's take this example. Now here's something very, very important. What students must realize and must do is understand that we need to break this mixed number down into its two parts with the whole number part and the fractional part. So again, it's very important that students do this. So now we take that problem and we have our mixed numbers split up into the whole number parts and the fractional parts, and we have a visual to represent the one in the two six and the two plus three six. What's important to do here is to apply one of our properties. Let's use our commutative property and take this here and this over here and switch places. Let's switch these around and there's an important reason for doing that. By doing that what we've done is we put all of our holes together and our fractional parts together so it's a lot, so it's a lot easier to combine them. So now what students simply need to do is realize that, okay well I've got three so I've got three holes so there's my three and then when I combine all my six, well, I've got one, two, three here, and then two more six here, so I've got a total of five, six. So there's my solution, three and five, six. Now, we can take that same problem and approach it from strictly a fractional standpoint. So we just take our ones and split them up into six in this case. So we have, let's see, uh, six, that's 18, 20, 23, six. So students can just count this up and get the solution in the form of an improper fraction. Now as an enrichment, uh, what you could do is show why with the visuals, especially the three and five, six and the 23 over six are, are equivalent. And as you can see, the main difference is with the holes that we have our three holes here and over here they're split up into the fractional parts. Uh, so again, that they can see that you know three holes plus another five, six as the same thing as 23, six and of course, the 23 refers to, you know, the little chunks of 1, 6 each, regardless of the shading or the orientation. They're all still the same 1, 6. And we have 23 of them. Let's do a subtraction example. Let's say we have 3 and 4 fifths, and we're going to subtract 1 and 1 fifth. So we do our visuals. We have 3 and 4 fifths, and we're going to take away 1 and 1 fifth. And so we do that. We take away one whole, and then we take away 1 fifth. And this is what we have remaining. And of course, students can just count and tell that there's one, two, and then uh, one, two, three fifths. We can also do this uh, strictly from a fractional standpoint. And again, that just involves taking our holes and split, splitting them up into five equal parts. But we have a little bit of a problem because we're going to subtract one and one fifth. Uh, so basically, break it down to two subtractions where you're gonna subtract five fifths and then another one-fifth. So then we do that with our visuals. There's our result. And then students can simply count that we have five, 10, 13 fifths total. And just like the previous uh, example, uh, we can also compare and see why it is that two and three-fifths would be equivalent to 13 fifths using the visuals. Now let's look at part D, which involves using some real life context, solving some problems involving addition, subtraction, or fractions. So let's look at this first problem. A recipe calls for one and three quarters quarts of chocolate milk. However, you are expecting a lot of guests and need to double the recipe to make twice the amount. So how much chocolate milk will you need? Now a good practice would be, don't just stop with just asking how much chocolate milk you're gonna need. You know, Put the additional requirement on there that they need to model the context with visual and numeric representation and then after doing that find the solution because they need to show their thinking. Now of course one thing they need to realize is that when I double the amount I'm just adding something to itself. So here I'm just going to add one and three-fourths with another one and three-fourths. 
Now we do that important piece of breaking the mixed number up into its component parts of the whole and the fraction. Now we can do some visuals to help us out. So here we have our, our chocolate, where again we have you know, one whole quart here and then three-fourths of a quart here. And so now we can solve the problem. Just like before, we use our commuter property and change the order of these two around so that we would have our holes together and then our fractional parts over here. Now, an interesting piece to this is that, ooh, if I add three-fourths and three-fourths, I can already tell that's more than one. But here's something that the students can do to solve this with the visual. All they simply need to do is just take one-fourth from here and put it over here so that the result will look like this. And basically what we did here was to use that idea of compose and decompose because all we did was to take the three here and take one away from it and make it a two and then take that one that we took away, add it over here so that it became four fourths. So just a little bit of composing and decomposing here with the numbers to get them what we need them to be. And now, of course, students can simply count. We've got one, two, three uh, whole quarts and an additional two-fourths. So our solution is three and two-fourths quarts. Now, you could do this by converting this all to fractions and everything and get 14 over 4. But in real-life context like this, you'd be better off just sticking with the mixed numbers because you're know, having to get three and two-fourths quarts of chocolate makes a lot more sense in real life than getting 14 fourths quarts of chocolate. Okay, let's look at another problem. A family is driving on a vacation trip. At the start of the trip, the gas gauge is indicating a full tank. And then after two hours of driving, the gas gauge now looks like this. So how much gas did they use? And again, don't just stop with how much gas did, they ha did the car use. Uh, model the context with visual and numeric representations and then find the solution. So with that in mind, well, this was our context. So if we put those two ideas together, uh, this is what happened. We started off with the full tank and this is where it's marking now. Now what the students need to do is relate the idea of the empty tank being zero and a full tank being one. Then figuring out that, uh, well, each of the markings, there's eight, uh, so these are eighths. And so label the values accordingly. Then when real we realize, okay, this is how much gas was used and the green is how much gas is left. So now we put that into a plain English statement that reflects the relationship. So the remaining gas plus the gas that was used will, would be our full tank of gas. And then numerically, we have uh, we were at three eighths, and we know that the full tank would be one full one full tank or eight eighths. So here's our scenario. We're looking for how much gas we used, and then of course students can simply uh, you know compute this and figure out that the difference is five eighths. Now we don't know how many gallons this is. All we know is that you know, we use five-eighths of one tank of gas, and that is our solution. And let's try another problem. A rain gauge indicates that last night's rainfall was four and one-thirds inches. The sun shone brightly for several days, causing evaporation of the water in the rain gauge. So the gauge now reads one and two-thirds inches. So how many inches did the rain gauge drop? And again, just like before, you want uh, students to be held more accountable and do something like this where they, again, they have to model the context. Again, with some type of visual representations and of course the equations, the expressions that show what's happening symbolically. So we start off, this is what we started off with and this is what we have now as far as the gauge. So our problem is we have to find out how much it dropped, which would be this lavender shading here. So that is, again, our task. So we start doing some labeling. Uh, we started off at four and one third, and we dropped to one and two thirds. 
And in order to find the difference, we need to subtract 4 and 1 third minus 1 and 2 thirds. Now, something like this with a good visual, the students can pretty much solve it by counting. So some students might just count like this. They'll start here. Okay, we got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this is in chunks of 1 third. So our solution is 8 thirds. Now you have some students that might be able to see this a little bit differently. What they might see is that, well look, from here to here, that's a distance of 1 whole. And then from here to here, that's another distance of 1. So that's 2. And then I still have this right here and this right here. Both of those are thirds, so that's 2 and 2 thirds. So that's another way of being able to count and get the solution. Now let's look at this from a computation standpoint. The 4 and 1 thirds minus 1 and 2 thirds. Well, the whole number part of it is fine. You know, we just take away uh, 1 from the 4. But the problem now is I'm supposed to take away 2 thirds from 1 third. So I don't have enough thirds. I've only got one of them, and I've got to take away two. So what we can do then is a simple idea of converting one of these holes into a fractional component, which, of course, in this case, I split it up into three parts, so I'd have three over three. So now I do have plenty of thirds available to subtract two of them. So we do that, and this is the result. So the students can see that we have one and another one, that's two and two-thirds. So we're able to do this with a visual. And from a computation standpoint, you know, we would, you know, in the old days we would call it borrowing and so forth. But so students are able to do this simply by using this idea of composing and decomposing, which in this case, again, just involved taking one whole and decomposing it into three pieces you know, three-thirds, and then we were able to do the problem. There was a lot to these standards, and hopefully this helped in clarifying uh, the meaning for you.